watched cases in the state, possibly the nation. A Broward jury recommended a life sentence instead of death for the young mass murderer who killed 17 at Stoneman Douglas High. A lone holdout juror took away the unanimous recommendation required for the death penalty. A bill that passed a House committee this week would change that, lowering the standard to a majority, at least 8 of 12 jurors, to recommend death. Tony Montalto, Gina's dad, was there to urge lawmakers to make that change. And Tony is also founder of Stand with Parkland, that organization. He is here with us today. Tony, good to have you back. Thank you. Um, so Stand with Parkland, your organization is an anti-violence and school safety organization, yet you stood in front of that committee. It sounded like not as head of the organization, but as Gina's dad. And you said to them, I am here as a victim. Explain. Well, let me just be clear that Stand with Parkland is about school safety. Uh, this, uh, our, my support of this bill is along with some of the other families, but uh, we're doing it as individual families. The, um, to your my point, daughter was. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but to your point, I know, and, and actually one of the things I was going to ask you is that the the group of 17 families is so diverse and with such different perspectives and politics. And that, that actually was one of the things I was hoping you would speak about. Right. Um, so many of us were in support of the death penalty. I'm not sure if everyone was. Many of us suffered through the trial and watched the uh, sad, uh, mistaken justice that was handed out in the sentencing by the jury. Um, I am a victim. My beautiful daughter, my forever 14-year-old Gina, um, had her life taken from her uh, by a mass murderer. Um, that has, you know, affected our family. Um, and we feel that because of the jury's incorrect decision that our families did not get justice, that the victims, my beautiful daughter, her 13 classmates and her three teachers did not get the justice that they deserved. Um, because we saw one individual derail that process by uh, somehow getting on the jury and, uh, and not uh, realizing that uh, the shooter should have been put to death. Have you heard from other families who do not agree with that? I don't know of anyone, but I also don't want to speak for any other family but my own today. Of course. Um, so the bill that's that's going through committee right now in Tallahassee. Um, our impression here was that the verdict in the Parkland case very much was the impetus for this bill. Is that something that you've seen? Um, I should hope so. Um, again, we saw the, a, a miscarriage of justice uh, take place here in Broward County. Um, we saw an activist juror somehow get on the jury and stop the whole justice system from working properly for our loved ones. Um, we need to remember that uh, this change, if it occurs through this bill, will not alleviate the burden on the prosecution to prove its case beyond a reasonable doubt. They'll still have to prove that the aggravators exist to make this convicted individual um, eligible for the death penalty. Uh, you know, additionally, um, it will also keep in place all the automatic appeals and everything else that uh, the perpetrator deserves uh, to make sure that the process is fair. However, what we saw here in Parkland was a system that was not fair to the victims. What we saw was people consider mitigators and then, uh, although they found all the aggravators, find a way to say that it's okay that someone who took 17 lives, someone who chose to pull a trigger 139 individual times, including when he pressed that weapon up against my daughter's chest and pulled the trigger, one of multiple times where she was shot, um, that that person should be allowed to grow old, to grow up, to have a life. Gina, her classmates, and her teachers were denied that. And uh, we feel that the, uh, and certainly in our case, the victim or the uh, perpetrator should have been punished to the fullest extent of the law. And we believe that other families deserve that right going forward. We can't change what happened to us, but one of the things we have done through our advocacy is try and make things better for others. Yeah, the uh, you know we've heard f 
uh, more than a few times during the course of that trial that if there is a death penalty in Florida that it was made for this case. We've heard that. And we've also heard from people who are just philosophically opposed to the death penalty at all in any case. And I wanted to bring up something that happened this week in Broward County. There was a man who was freed from prison after more than three decades that he had spent there because the state attorney's office uh, found that he was wrongfully convicted. And the, the death penalty opponents point to situations like that and say, what happens if something like that would happen when someone has already received an irreversible consequence? What do you think? Well, I can't really comment on that. I can only comment on victims, but I will say that technology has gotten better and that's probably had something to do with exonerating this individual. We just need a fair system. And to have a fair system, we need that the perpetrators, the convicted murderers that are put up for death penalties, again, there's not a question of their guilt or innocence at that point. They've already been convicted. And then the heinous, atrocious, and cruel nature of their crime, among other things, is what makes them eligible for death. Not every murder deser murderer deserves a death penalty, but it's the cruel, atrocious, heinous, and other ones listed in the aggravators that are developed by the state courts. Those are the ones that need to be punished to the fullest extent of the law. In Florida, that's the death penalty. That is the justice, the fullest extent of the justice system that my family deserved. I, uh, I want to talk about one other bill in the short time we have together left. The um, We call it tort reform and actually uh, Representative Tom Fabricio, who is carrying that bill, was here with us talking about how this bill would make it a bit more difficult to sue insurance companies um, trying to manage frivolous litigation is the goal. And, and you had said that that would have made uh, some real difficult issue for you and the other families in your uh, court processes after um, after the murders. And I wonder if you would explain that. Why, why are you against this bill? Sure. Uh, first of all, I'm not against the entire bill. I'm against uh, one very specific provision of the bill. And that provision in the bill will allow uh, on a civil trial jury form, when the apportionment of blame comes, to have the perpetrator of a crime listed as one of the people that should be blamed. Um, a civil trial, such as we're going through and, and ones in the future again, because this doesn't affect us, um, is about negligence, negligence of either the property owner, negligence of an entity that allowed a crime to happen. To put a perpetrator of a crime on that form will, uh, somebody who acted purposefully, um, will change the complexion of that trial, will change the apportionment of blame for that and uh, could lead to some very bad outcomes and harm the citizens of Florida. Uh, I understand that they're trying to curb some other things and uh, I don't know enough about the law to really explain or talk about all those, but I can speak again, sadly, as a victim, uh, that I know that I wouldn't wanna have to sit in the courtroom for another minute during the civil trial with the perpetrator of the crime that destroyed my life. Understood. Tony Montalto, you have become such a valuable voice for justice for all the wrong reasons, and we always, always are grateful for your time on this program. Well, thank you for having me, and, uh, and uh, it's important to have these discussions, so thanks. 100%. Thank you.